Good morning, Yoga Shala friends. My name is Cornelia. I teach a beginner vinyasa class on Sunday mornings. And uh, due to our circumstances, I am going to also record a class for you all at home. Um, like I said, it's a beginner vinyasa class. So I'd like you to make sure that you have, um, you know, blocks, uh, blankets, straps, whatever you need to have to sustain you to your practice, make it more comfortable on you. Also, if you're new to yoga, you do want to make sure that it's okay with your doctor, you know, whatever condition you may have, you know, just clear it up. And, uh, and I'll meet you right here on my mat. We're going to start in Sukhasana, which is crisscross applesauce. So you'll just come down onto the floor, you cross your legs in front of you, and then you just rest your palms on your knees. If you would like, you can please put a block underneath your seat or a blanket, a mat, an extra one rolled up, just so your seat is elevated. It will make it a little bit more comfortable on you. Your thighs can relax more. And then you just take a moment right there to start inhaling and exhaling through your nose. Just find yourself there on your mat. Let yourself gravitate there for a bit. And then I'll talk through the practice. Um, so I usually talk through the practice, but however, I usually don't practice along with anybody. So this will be kind of new. Of course, I will be demonstrating all the postures, taking the class with you in essence, but I will be talking at the same time. Um, this is all new to me. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't really like the fact that everything I say will be there forever to repeat. Um, anyways, we got to get past that. So just have some fun with me and I will have fun with you. So you're sitting nice and tall. Your palms are resting on your knees. And then just check in with yourself. So as you start inhaling and exhaling only through the nostrils, just your natural breath, inhaling, exhaling. So you want to make sure you feel your seat on the floor. You're lifting away, growing nice and tall through the spine. So that the crown of your head is lengthening up towards the ceiling. Your shoulders are relaxed. They're away from your ears. You can roll them up, forward, backwards, just to make sure that you're as relaxed as you can be. Allow your thighs to relax. So again, if you need to elevate your seat, please do that. Relaxing the thighs. And then we'll start Ujjayi breath. So Ujjayi breath is our breathing, our pranayama that we want to try to sustain through the practice. Especially in the beginning, this will be difficult. You'll you know, be reminded to come back to it and that's okay. So you're inhaling and exhaling still through the nostrils, but it is as if you were to fog up the mirror or your glasses per se, and you would open your mouth and you would go <sighs> Try to keep that same action through the back of the throat, but then seal your lips. So it'll still be breathing in and out through the nostrils, but it will be not a nasal sound, like a It'll be like a soft snoring sound. So you notice your breath is slowly lengthening. Your exhale as well as your inhale. You're slowing down your breathing and therefore everything else is slowing down with you. So continue to just focus on the giant breath. You'll notice it's much more difficult than you may have thought. You also want to learn to tune your ear towards the sound. So you start to turn your mind and let yourself just listen to your breath. Kind of close out things that are around you. Even the emotions bubbling in from inside. Just letting them come up and then let them evaporate. Try not to hold on and grab on to thoughts that pop up into your head. Just let them go like the clouds drifting by. And then 
very slowly with that, continuing with Ujjayi breath, with your exhale, just dropping your chin to the chest, letting your chest rise up with your inhale towards your chin. And then as you exhale, slowly rotate your head. So you want to try to keep the shoulders as relaxed as you can and create the circle as slowly and meticulous as you can. You want to get into each position nice and slowly as you come back to your chest. Inhale, lifting your head. Exhale, chin towards the chest and then letting the chest rise up as you inhale. And then slowly again, rotating the opposite way. So you want full range of motion to where you feel comfortable. Coming all the way around. Just really kind of taking the delight in slowing down feeling every last little bit of that rotation. As you come back to the chin, inhale and lift. So then we'll do that one more time to each side. Exhale, chin to chest, lifting the chest with your inhale, keeping the shoulders relaxed, and then rotating. It doesn't really matter if you pick right or left first. Just again, making sure you're completing the circle and softly. As you come back, inhale, lift. Exhale, chin down. Opposite side. Coming around and lifting up. Inhale there. Exhale. Bring your hands to the side and we'll Create a nice circle with your inhale as far as you can go, lifting up, letting the fingertips reach up to the ceiling, lengthening through the waist, lifting, lifting, press the palms slightly, and then exhale, let the arms float down. Continuing with Ujjayi breath, nice and slow, letting the hands come all the way down to the floor. Inhale, lifting up again, lengthen up reaching through the waist. Fingertips are tickling the ceiling and as you press the palms together, maybe let the head drop back into the cradle and then lengthen, lengthen, gaze up towards the thumbs. And slowly with your exhale, opening up, letting the arms float down. And then we'll come forward. You can either roll up onto the knees, so hands and knees are down, or if your knees are not in a happy place, then you can bring the legs out and then switch and come around. So our hands are underneath our shoulders. Our knees are right underneath our hips. Our lower legs are flat. The top of the foot is relaxed on the mat. And we'll go into cat and cow, just a little bit more warm up. So we're pushing the floor away with our hands rather than just sinking into the shoulders. You're pushing away, lifting away from the floor. Your belly button is lifting up towards the spine. And with your inhale, drawing into your hands a little bit, bringing the chest forward and through, letting the belly drop, lifting your eyes, inhale there. And with your exhale, opposite. So we're pushing the floor away. We're lifting the spine up to the ceiling. You're letting your head drop, gazing back through your thighs. Exhale all the way. Inhale. Again, you're drawing on the hands a little bit to the floor and lifting the chest forward and through the arms. Press into the palms. Keep your eyes forward and exhale. Inhale, lifting up and through. Keeping your arms involved, keep your palms involved. And exhale. Inhale into neutral. 
and then we'll bring that left hand forward a bit and then the right hand feeds through. So we're turning the palm facing up and then we're feeding that arm through, letting the right shoulder come down onto the mat, the side of the head. So it's a nice easy twist. You can continue to push into the palm a little bit on the left to make sure you can create that twist. Belly button to the spine. And again, you want to go to where you're comfortable and you still are breathing with Jai breath. Inhale, pressing into that left hand, lifting up, bring the arm through, and we're switching sides. Right hands down, feeding the arm through, palm is facing up, shoulder reaches down towards the mat, adjust the right hand and give yourself a little push into that hand. Make sure you can create that nice little spinal twist. And again with your inhale, pressing into the palms. Exhale as you come out of this, palms are down. So for the first down dog, we want to make sure that our hands are shoulder width apart. We want the fingers spread as wide as you can in a comfortable way. And as you're pressing down, the little space between your your um, middle finger and index finger is pointing straight forward, out and away. And then from there, you're pressing into the palms, turning your toes in the back, pressing back. You can walk those toes out and about a little bit. Press down, open up through the sole of the foot. Giving that pinky toe a chance to kind of reach down for the mat. And then we're pressing into the palms lifting off of the knees, reaching the hips up to the ceiling, lengthen up. So you're on your tippy toes, you're pressing the floor away with your hands, and you're slowly sinking the heels towards the mat. Whether they reach there or not, you're relaxing your head, pressing the floor away with your hands, and then just for a warm up, you can walk the feet up and down. Going about it nice and slow, giving your muscles a chance. Easy does it. You can sway the hips from side to side. Still focusing on that ujjayi breath. And then slowly with your inhale, you're looking up and then you're walking your feet up towards your hands. And as you're slowly coming up, we want to open the feet up at least hip width apart. So six to seven inches at least. And then the outer edges of the feet are parallel to each other. And then you're bending the knees plenty. So we want the knees bent. We want the legs straight for this part. Inhale, lift the ribcage away from the thighs and as you exhale, bring your ribcage closer to the thighs. Allow your hands to drop and then cradle your elbows and let the head drop. So you're letting yourself drip forward over your thighs, kind of cascading like a waterfall. Breathing with giant breath, letting go of your head. You can say yes and no. Right and left. Just making sure everything is nice and relaxed and you're just staying here. Really settling in for a moment. Feeling your breath. Feeling gravity slowly taking over. Allowing your head to move forward towards the ground. And you're rooted through your feet. Throw all four corners of your feet, right and left, from the big toe to the little toe, and right and left of the heel. And slowly from there, we're going to let go of the hands, and then roll up with your inhale. So you're pressing into those feet, you're keeping your knees bent and soft, and your back nice and rounded. So with your inhale, you're drawing up, lifting up, lifting up, coming nice and tall. Let the shoulders drop back. 
extend your legs and then step up to the top of the mat so we're going to start with sun salutations you're starting out with your toes together big toes together heels maybe slightly apart but if that's uncomfortable to you and you need a little bit wider stand to balance then you open your feet up the feet are still parallel so make sure your toes are facing forward. So we want to really be mindful of those things. We don't want the feet opening out to the side. Aligning the feet, your heels are right underneath your knees, your knees are right underneath your hips. Your pelvis is nice and neutral, the shoulders are relaxed. And then let's bring our hands to Anjali Mudra. So we're going to bring our hands into prayer position and we're going to start our practice with three ohms. If you have not tried this before, try it. It is really quite therapeutic, and if you're alone in the room, just go for it. It is an amazing sound. Take your inhale. on the mat. It can be something important in your work life, in your home life. It can be a really lofty goal and it can be as simple as the simplest thing you can think of. It's a very personal thing, but if you're doing that, you're giving your practice a purpose and you're not just moving about on the mat. So keep that in mind. If you can, set an intention for your practice today. And when you're through, Slowly let your hands slide down to the sides of your thighs. You have a neutral pelvis, you're standing tall, the shoulders are relaxed, your eyes, your drishti is just kind of gazing forward and down. So you're looking down from the tip of the nose and beyond. And you're coming back to that ujjayi breath. So we'll do three sun salutations A. The first one I'm gonna do the very, very beginner way. And then I'll slowly come up a little bit higher in the level. So if you're beginner, beginner, stay with the first variation. If you'd like to try a little bit more or a little bit more, that is up to you. You can always go and dial it back. That's the beauty. It is your practice. If you feel overwhelmed, come on down to a seated position again and just focus on your breath and join back in when you're ready. Don't just give up and watch the rest of the video. Do join back in, but focusing on your breath first and foremost. Inhaling, exhaling through the nostrils, focusing on that action from the back of the throat and tuning your hearing into your breath listening along. Here we go. Inhale, reaching up, arms above the head, gazing up to the thumbs if possible, or keeping the arms separate. Exhale, forward fold. So we're going to bend the legs for the easiest version. We're going to slowly coming down. We're going to bring the hands down onto the mat and let the head drop. Exhale. Inhale, lift and lengthen your spine. The shoulders are moving away from the ears and if the floor is too far, the hands come up just below the knees and really focus on lengthening the spine, lifting your heart forward, gazing out in front. 
exhale, press the palms down, and we're going to step back into plank. So you're pressing down, come on down onto one knee, bring the foot back, join with the other, and then bring your knees down. We're going to shift forward and lower down towards the mat. So as you're coming down, the elbows move back and they're nice and straight by your side. And then we're flattening the feet. So we're gonna try and keep the heel of the hand underneath the elbow. A lot of times we keep those little chicken wings out to the side where the palm is directly underneath your shoulder. So walk them back a little bit. Press them down onto the floor. And again, for the beginner version, we're just gonna press into the floor and slowly lift the chest away a little bit. The elbows keep facing back. And you're lifting away, you're letting your belly rest on the mat while you're engaging it a little bit. You wanna lift the belly button up towards the spine. Your glutes, your bottom are relaxed, your feet are reaching back behind you. Inhale there, exhale, lowering down. And we're pressing into the palms, coming up onto the hands and knees. Turning the toes, down dog, lifting up. As you settle into down dog, you're just focusing on your breath again. We're focusing on the area between the belly button and the pubic bone. When I talk about lifting the belly towards the spine, that is our energy log, Uriyana Bandha. We want to keep that engaged, focusing on our breath, letting our eyes look back towards our feet or towards the knees, opening the shoulders and really pressing into the floor. So very active through the hands, arms, feet and legs. And with your next inhale, looking up, bring your knees down and then we'll step the feet forward again, one at a time. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fall. Inhale, coming all the way tall, lifting up. Exhale, samasitihi, starting point. So stick with this very easy version, or we're gonna just go up a notch to where it might be a little bit more um, strenuous. And you, like I said, you can always style it back. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward fold. So try to keep your legs straight, engaging through Uddiyana Bandha. And as you're folding, you're bringing your hands down. If you don't touch the floor, bend your knees slightly. Keep the knees close together. And then let your head drop. Inhale, halfway. Hands down. Legs are straightened, or we'll bring the hands to the shins. We want the knees and the hips and the heels in a line. So try not to push your booty back too much. Bring it forward a little bit, lifting up to the heart. Exhale, press the palms, and again, we're stepping back. Instead of bringing the knees down, we're gonna step back into high plank. From here, we're gonna shift forward, elbows back, and lower down, nice straight line. Flattening down on the mat, press into the palms, lifting up and away. So, soft glutes, belly lifted, coming up, press into the palms. So the knees are still resting on the mat. You're paying attention to your belly button and you're trying not to let yourself sink into the shoulders. Push the floor away, lengthen the head, up to the ceiling, bring the heart forward. And then with your exhale, turning the toes, lifting up, down dog. So we already have several things to focus on. The placement of our feet, the placement of our hands. We're focusing on Ujjayi breath. We're also paying attention to Uriyana Bandha. And really in Down Dog, we have two more Bandhas to engage. Mula Bandha is your perineum. 
I'm going to lift to the front, then to the back. So it is almost as if you would hold your urine and then squeeze all the way back towards your anus. Now that we've discussed that, Jalavarabhana, much more comfortable to talk about, letting your chin drop towards the chest. Gazing past your ankles again, past your knees. Inhale, looking up. Walk your feet forward. Toe to toe. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Again, either to the floor, up to the shins. Trying to line your hips up with your heels. Bring your heart forward, shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way tall. Press the palms, exhale. Samastitihi. All right, one more time. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, stepping back into plank. Making sure you know your variations how you can make it easier for yourself. So the third and probably most difficult one, Chaturanga Randasana. So we're moving forward and then coming down and hovering. Shoulders at the height of the elbows and then pulling through with your chest, lifting up. The legs are extended, the tops of the feet are flat on the mat and so are the knees are lifted as well this time. Bring your heart forward, press into the palms. And as you exhale, turn the toes down dog. Inhale, looking up, slowly walking those feet up again. Inhale, lifting, lengthening. Exhale and fold. Inhale, coming all the way tall, lifting up, press through the palms. Exhale, samastitihi. Here we go. So that was our warm up. Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A. We'll, we'll do one set of Sun Salutation B. Again, the feet start out touching, big toes. And then we're sitting back as if you want to sit in a chair. So you're bringing your rear end back, keeping your knees together above your toes, sitting back, and then bring your hands forward. Find your balance there. We're tilting the pelvis, belly button to the spine, hands are forward, and then you can decide. You can lengthen up towards the ceiling and gaze up again, but not if you're dropping into the belly. You don't want to have a little duck thing going on here. You want to bring the belly in and let the tailbone reach towards the floor. Inhale there, and as you exhale, draping forward into that forward fold. So remember, with every time, remember your variations. Forward fold, inhale halfway, exhale, press the palms, stepping back into plank, moving forward to lower down, inhale up and through, exhale, down dog. So we're going to pivot that left foot out, right at the ball of the foot, and then step the right foot up. So this is a pretty difficult thing to do for most beginners. So we're taking it easy. We're bringing that right foot up, bring a little bit more weight into the left hand, and then bring that foot along until you're coming up next to that left hand. And then slowly bringing the knee over your ankle, and then we're coming up, coming up, into warrior one. So the knee is over your ankle. The back foot is flat on the mat. You want to feel the pinky toe there. And then we're bringing that left hip around, settling in, bring the arms overhead, and again, gaze up towards the thumbs, palms touching. And again, if the shoulders are tight, keep your arms apart, palms facing each other. Big inhale, exhale, hands down to either side of the foot. 
we're going to come up to the ball of the foot on the left side and then step back into plank moving forward to lower down inhale up and through exhale down dog so now we'll repeat the same on the opposite side so the right foot turns out and then again helping that left side forward or if you're comfortable stepping the foot up foot up knee over the ankle slowly coming up coming up palms facing up gaze up to the thumbs settle in and at this point you always want to come back to your breath focus on that belly button when i say focus on the belly button it's like that whole area from hip to hip is a little net and you're drawing it in to support yourself from the inside Taking a nice deep breath and with your exhale, bring the hands down. Coming into the right side, into that lunge. Turning on the ball of the foot, press into the palms. Left foot steps back, moving forward to lower down. Inhale, up and through. Exhale, down dog. So we're staying there. Our mind has a lot to focus on. Five, five deep breaths. And with your inhale, lift your eyes forward. And again, we're walking the feet up. So we're coming up. Walking the feet up, toe to toe, if possible. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Inhale, and again, we're gonna bend through the knees into that chair pose from the beginning of Sun Salutations B. Gonna lift your toes a little bit, bring your hands forward, checking in with your pelvis, and then decide if you wanna bring your arms up Breathe, coming up nice and tall. Exhale, samastitihi. All right, we'll do a pretty simple standing series. Again, we're gonna come up into that chair pose. So focusing on a jai breath, finding your alignment through your feet again. Inhale, bend your knees, reach the arms up. Exhale forward fold. Relax the top of the head down towards the mat. Try not to draw it into your legs. Just reach forward with the crown of the head towards the floor. Inhale halfway. Exhale press into the palms and again we're stepping back. Knees down or up. Moving all the way forward or hovering. Inhale, up and through. Allow the chest to really reach forward. Press into the palms. And with your exhale, turning the toes, down dog. So we've been here already several times. So as you're getting more used to this asana, make sure you're using the whole palm of your hand. Press the floor away with your hands. And then again, we're gonna pivot the left foot and we're gonna step the right foot up. Remember, you can help yourself along. You can also bring the knees down and step the foot up or you can just step the foot up again. Either way, take your time. So as you catch up, the foot is placed, knee over your ankle, slowly lifting up and away for warrior one. That hip on the left side is coming around. You're settling through the hips. The shoulders are relaxed. The arms are reaching up. Gazing to the thumbs. Settling. Find that connection again to your breath. And as you inhale there, we're slowly opening up to warrior two. So try to keep your legs where they are, but turning your torso and your hips 
towards the left. And then settling in again. Open your arms up front to back of the room. You're reaching through your fingertips. You're gazing out over the right fingers. The shoulders stay relaxed. And the one important thing I want you to look as you gaze down, I would like to see if you can see that right toe, the big toe of your right foot. Because we don't want the knee to drop into the midline. We don't want to come in. We want the knee directly pointing towards the toes and then settling in there. Shoulders are above the hips, so we're not reaching forward or back. Try to keep the shoulders right above the hips. And then give yourself some time to really just settle in there. Feel. Inhale, and we're gonna straighten that front leg, getting ready for triangle, for trikonasana. So we're keeping everything the same. The legs are straightened. We're gonna move that left hip up, and reach out with your right hand over the right leg as far as you can. So really engaging through that thigh. You're lifting up the kneecap, engaging through your muscles here, your quadricep. And then when you know you can't reach further, just allow your hand to drop. So you can go below the knee, anywhere along the shin. You can come down towards the foot and the big toe, but not if you have to lean forward into the floor. So try to keep the chest nice and open. Allow the hand to reach to where you're comfortable. And then you're gazing up as you're stacking that left arm over the right. If you can gaze up, turning your head up towards the thumb again. And if not, just gaze out towards the side. And you're focusing on your breath. Keeping it going. Belly is lifting towards the spine, supporting yourself. Nice big breath there, inhale, coming all the way up, lift, 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 lift. Exhale, knee over your ankle again, and then the elbow down towards the knee. We're gonna turn the palm facing up and being careful not to drop into the shoulder but to lift away from the shoulder, opening the chest, the body out to the side, keeping that knee over your ankle in the front, and then reaching your left arm up. Staying there, breathe. Now if you're super comfortable here, you can bring that right hand down onto the floor behind your right foot. So on the pinky toe side, you can bring the hand down. Bring the shoulder and the knee a little closer together. And then if you want to, you can reach the arm forward and out, gazing up towards the palm. So we have a nice straight line. Breathe, diagonal line. Big inhale, and with your exhale, slowly allow the hand to come down, one to either side of your foot, pressing into the palms, and again, you can either bring the knees down first and step back, and then into plank, or you can just step the foot back into plank. Moving forward to lower down, inhale up and through, exhale, down dog. Mm, settle in, find your position there. Feel your body. Focus on your breath. Rest if you need to. slowly turn the right foot out and just like before we're stepping the left foot up so as you step the left foot up again either come to the knees or help your heel along or just stepping the foot up at some point you'll be able to as the foot is placed knee over your ankle 
the right foot is flat on the mat, and then we're slowly lifting up and away. Knee lined up with your ankle, right hip coming around to the front of the mat, and then the hands lift up again. The arms are parallel or palms together, and again, your eyes either forward or up towards the thumbs. Allow yourself to really settle in. So warrior one pose. That's a very empowering pose. Strong. Use your legs. Lifting away. Grounding those feet. Engaging those bandhas to really support you and give you steadiness. So with your next inhale, we'll come into warrior two as we're opening up to the right hand side now. So we're turning the hips, turning the chest, making sure that the knee doesn't go into the midline, but moves towards the pinky toe, and then the hands front to back. Settle in, find your breath again. Relax through the shoulders, gazing out over those left fingertips. With your next inhale, extending that left leg. So again, keeping the hips open to the side, the knee is pointing towards the toes, your quadricep is engaged, we're crooking the hip out to the right, and then reaching out with the left, over the left leg. Try not to let the knee drop into the joint. Make sure you're using your muscles. So you're lengthening out, and then again, finding a place where you can rest there for your breathing. So either below the knee, along the shin. And I'm so sorry, I forgot to say, of course you can use blocks. You're reaching up with your right hand, stacking the shoulders, settling into your breathing, gazing out to the side or up to the thumb. your inhale press into the feet and lift all the way up again and as you're coming up bending the knee elbow towards the knee lifting away from the shoulder reaching that right arm up we still want to keep the left knee over the ankle we're still pressing back with that right foot really lengthening feeling our weight through that left foot and then from here, if you're comfortable, bringing that left hand down behind that left foot. And again, if the floor is still a little too far, use a block. Bringing the hand down, knee and shoulder a little closer together. And as you're lengthening up, and then reaching forward, gazing into the palm. So you don't have to go here. You can back it up to where you are comfortable. You can also just remain on the floor for a moment and breathe, focus on that breath, jai breath. One more big inhale there, and as you exhale, slowly bringing the hands down, one to either side of the foot, pressing into the palms. Again, either bring the knees down to step back, or we're stepping back into plank. Moving forward, lower down, inhale, up and through, exhale, down dog, and allow yourself to really settle in there, finding that breath again, Inhale, looking up. Exhale, walking the feet forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, and fold. Inhale, halfway, bending those knees. Coming back 
to Ujjayi, uh, to um, Utkatasana, to that chair pose. But this time, we're gonna pause here for a moment. Bring the hands up to your heart center. So you're pressing the palms into one another. We're going to take the left elbow towards the right knee. And as you press, press the elbow towards the right knee, we want to continue to press the palms so that they come towards the center of the chest. Well, it's not that easy to do. So as you're pressing the palms together, you might notice that your hips really pop out to the side, your knees might splay away from each other. Try to keep the knees close together. The left hip moves back behind you and then you're pressing into the palms. Inhale, coming into the center. Exhale, release the hands, soften the knees and drop your head. Just give yourself a moment to relax through the legs. Straightening them, walking up and down. And then we'll come to the opposite side. Knees bent, coming into chair pose, palms to the heart, and then right elbow to the left knee. Now the left hip moves back, right hip moves back, so that you're not shifting forward. And then pressing the palms, slowly but surely the palms will come a little closer to your heart center. your inhale coming back to the center exhale and release extend the legs for a moment really let yourself just enjoy walking up and down inhale halfway exhale walk your hands forward a little bit and then we'll come down into a nice little squat so coming up onto the balls of the feet your ball of the foot roll down coming up again and then the next time we're going to open the knees up to either side of the elbows so we're opening up keep your hands there to support yourself i know this is not easy for a lot of people with your tight hips and then slowly walk yourself back onto your seat so if you can't comfortably just roll onto your bottom, walk your hands back and help yourself down. So as you're rolling back, bring the soles of the feet together and then slide them in towards your groin. You're sitting as tall as you can at this point. So you're drawing the spine up and the chest is lifting forward. You're bringing your hands towards your feet so that the top, the top the hands are on the top of the foot and the thumb to the ball of your foot so you can open your soles or your feet up a little bit like a book as you're opening up the soles of your feet try to engage through your abductors on either side of your thigh and as you're doing that you're allowing the knees to draw down towards the floor so you're opening the soles of the feet and allowing the knees to go a little further down so your legs are engaged. They're not just laying there, they're engaged. They're lifting the chest. Settle in there, breathe. It is also helpful to maybe place a block underneath each side if you're not coming down to the floor. It's nice to feel that resistance, to have something there to press against. Inhale, looking up. Exhale and release. Nice and easy, releasing through the feet. And then slowly extend your legs out. Sitting up nice and tall. So one more nice little exercise for our hips. We're gonna start with the right and cross it over the left. So the ankle is past your leg, just on top of your knee, on the squishy part right above your knee. And then reach around through the inside of your thigh, through the outside of your left thigh, and you can hold on right behind the knee to the top of your thigh. We're gonna roll back nice and easy. So as you're lifting onto your sit bones, allow yourself 
to drop back a little bit more and a little bit more. I want to just say we want to engage through the foot. So we're not letting the foot just relax and hang. We're going to flex and then turn a little bit open and keep that action going to protect the knee. And then slowly rolling back. So as you're rolling onto your back, your head will be relaxed on the mat. You're going to draw that knee into the chest a little bit more. As you're drawing in, engaging through that right foot, protecting the right knee, and your right elbow can kind of let a little pressure happen towards the upper right thigh. And then you're drawing in. Just relax there, breathe. You should feel that through your outer right thigh, buttocks area, hip area. Breathe. If this is comfortable, stay there. If this is easier for you, you can release the hands there, holding on to that right foot, bringing the right foot into the crook of your left elbow and release the left foot down. And then you can draw the leg a little closer towards your chest. Breathe. The hips remain on the mat. Whatever variation you were practicing, slowly as you inhale, lifting up. We're going to extend that leg, and as we give it a little bit of motion, we're going to roll up. <laughs> exhale there. And then relax the leg out. Stretch it out. So there we'll have a little fun with it. Crossing the left over. Again, flexing through that foot. So you're drawing the top of the foot up towards your lower leg. So that dorsal flexion and then opening the ankle a little bit up. Protecting the knee this way. You're reaching through, hugging your hands and interlacing the fingers right behind your upper right thigh. And again, as you're bending the right knee and lifting up, balancing on your sit bones, and then slowly roll back. And then again, as you're letting your torso rest on the mat, that left elbow is pressing against the left thigh slightly. And you're drawing the knee a little bit closer to the chest. So again, wherever you go with that is where you are and you breathe and you stay. Bring a smile on your face. And again, if this one is a little easy for you, one way to make it a little bit more challenging, keeping the hips on the mat, but then hugging that left foot into the right elbow, moving the knee away, still using that flexion in the foot. Relax the right knee down and then draw the leg a little closer to the chest. Breathe. Extend that leg, and then we're slowly rolling up again. Well, or a little more dynamic, really. So as you extend the leg, give yourself a little swing. Coming up, extend the leg out, release the right leg, stretch it out a little bit, shake it out. Sitting nice and tall. Inhale there. Press the palms down right to either side of your hip and you're pressing into the palms, lifting the chest up towards the ceiling, straightening your spine. Extend the legs away from you. Exhale and bring your chin down towards your chest. So really engaging every part of your body. Inhale, lifting your gaze. And with your exhale, we'll walk the hands forward. So as we're coming into a forward seated fold, I want you to think about tilting from your hips. Those are hamstring stretch, so we don't want the back rounder just to 
aim the forehead towards the, the legs. We want to sit as tall as you can. Shoulders relaxed. And then really you're reaching forward through your solar plexus with your heart area. It is moving forward. Keeping your back nice and straight. Your legs are extended and engaged. And then wherever you go is where you go. You sit there, you pause, you breathe, you stay engaged. If you can walk your hands towards your feet, then bring your fingers to the soles of the foot and the thumbs towards the big toes. Sitting tall again, breathe and with your exhale, just letting go a little bit more. This is a hamstring stretch. Keep your back nice and straight. Keep your legs engaged. Keep those quadriceps really strong so your hamstrings can relax. And as you inhale, looking up, exhale and release. So we're going to come into a little twist. We're going to bring that right leg up. We're stepping the foot down as close to your hip slightly outside of the hip as you can. So you're pressing down into that foot. Keep your left hand out to the side for a moment. And as you're pressing into that foot to really theme to lift up and away with your spine. So you're lifting, pressing into that foot, right? You're holding on and a nice easy twist. Left elbow to the right knee. Still thinking long through the spine. The left leg is engaged. The foot is flexed and then slowly with your exhale coming into the twist. So as your elbow is resting on your knee, you can be the judge and see if that's an easy part for you. If your shoulder is on top of the knee, maybe you can wiggle the elbow down a little bit more. Come into a little bit more of a twist. So we're focusing on Uddiyana Bandha, belly button to the spine. your eyes wander to the back of your mat as far as your as possible. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale and slowly release. Extend the leg out. Shake the legs. Left foot steps down. Just outside the hip. Slightly outside the hip. Pressing down nice and flat. Bring your left hand out for balance, your right hand out for balance. And then again, you want to really stand on that left foot. So making sure you're engaging through that leg. You're bringing the knee tight into the chest. You're lengthening the spine nice and tall. And the right elbow comes to the left knee. So as you exhale and you come into your twist, Again, you can kind of observe where you're at. Twisting is tough. People get anxious. So just evaluate yourself. And again, if you can see your knee and your elbow are lined up and you're comfortable there, well, either stay there, if not, back it up a little bit more. Or let the elbow slide to the outside of the knee. Let your hand rest towards the hip and come into that twist. steps towards it. So the first one is we're going to just bring the feet down. We're going to keep the tippy toes on the mat but lift the heels up if possible. So your legs are engaged, you're lifting up through the chest, you're bringing your pelvis forward, rolling it down. And then keep your hands right behind your knees. And then just lifting up and balancing there. Stay there and breathe. Maybe bring your legs up parallel to the floor. If you're still comfortable there, release your hands. Keep your shoulders relaxed, your chest lifted, gazing past your toes. 
you're okay there, extend your legs. We're gonna stay there for five breaths. So if you change your mind midway through, go ahead. If this is too tough and this is too tough, instead of losing your alignment, hold on, bring your hands down and lift your chest. Hold on, let your feet drop. You're still working the same muscles. Breathe. Inhale there. Exhale, bring your feet down. Allow yourself to just kind of drape over the thighs and drop your head. Hmm. Inhale, looking up again. So one more time. Choosing a variation you're comfortable with that you can sustain for five breaths. your feet and draw the knees into the chest as tight as you can. Bring them in and rest your toes onto the mat. We're going to press the hands down a little bit before our hips, so between the hips and the feet. You're bringing the palm of the hand down, you're pressing down, and just try to lift your seat off the mat. So if it doesn't happen, you're still engaging your muscles. Take a nice deep breath in. Press and lift, and lower down. Exhale there. Slowly rolling onto the mat. Arms out to the side. So we'll have the, uh, well, actually, let's go into bridge pose. So we'll bring the arms alongside our body. Let me turn sideways. We'll bring the arms alongside our body. Palms are facing up. Walking the feet in so that as you drop your palms onto your thighs and you let them slide down, the back of the heel and your fingers should be close together touching. And then from there, we're going to turn the feet in so that it looks a little pigeon toed because we don't want our knees to drop out. You want the knees to stay in line as best as you can with your heels. With your inhale, you're gazing up straight up onto the ceiling. And then you're wiggling your shoulders underneath you a little bit. So as you're wiggling under, wiggling under, you notice your chest lifts a little bit. And then with your next inhale, you're pressing into the feet to lift your hips off the mat. So as you're lifting up, you keep pressing into your feet, lifting the hips. You're rolling up on the shoulders a little bit more. And if you have the space underneath you, if you feel secure, clasp your hands. Breathe. If this is a difficult place for you to be, you can place a block underneath your hips and let your seat rest on the block and then still keep your legs engaged. One more deep breath, inhale, lift your hips a little higher, lift them off the block, and then slowly as you slide the block out or your hands coming off the shoulder and from the top of the shoulder along the spine, we're rolling down onto the mat. Letting the hips rest on the mat. Palms rest down. And then we'll practice that one more time. So now that you've done that once, keeping your eyes straight up onto the ceiling. Palms are facing up. Toes are turned in a little bit and all of your foot is placed down again onto the mat. You're really rooted down. And then snuggle the shoulders under. Inhale. Exhale, press into the feet to lift the hips. Press into the feet. Try not to really clench with your glutes too much. And as you get settled in, either clasping the hands, using a block, and then remain there, breathe.
slowly. We're going to release the hands, release the block, walk the shoulders out, and roll down. Nice and easy. From here, we're going to draw the knees into the chest. And you can keep your knees splayed open, far apart, or you can bring your knees closer together. But we're going to hug them into the chest. Hug them in and then lift the nose to kind of meet the knees. Nice spinal flexion there and then release the head down. Extending the legs up, pressing through the heels. Press through the heels, lengthening up towards the ceiling while your torso rests on the mat. We're still practicing with dry breath. We're still focusing on kind of stilling our lower abdomen. So you can stay here, palms facing up, hands slightly away from you. Or you can put a block underneath your hips just so that you're elevated. The hips are a little higher than your heart. The last part would be shoulder stand. If you have not practiced shoulder stand, don't feel like you need to practice it now for the first time. If you have practiced it, by all means, go for it. So staying with this position is the safest and very effective. Take a nice deep inhale right here, through the nose, out through the mouth, and again, inhale, exhale, and as we come into this resting phase, we're letting go of that ujjayi breath, we're letting go of our bandhas, our energy locks that we were trying to focus on at times. So just staying there in Chavasana. Your breath returns back to your natural inhale and exhale. Stay there for five to ten minutes. I was very glad to kind of lead you through this practice. I hope to see you again. Please, if you have any questions, send them in. And until next time.